Welcome back, everyone, to Mike Solves America. I've been off for a little while, but that does not mean I have not been thinking and figuring out ways to help you, America. Um, we're going to start today talking about student loan debt. Everyone's heard about this. It accounts, they said, for over $1.5 trillion. I believe the number is now $1.6 as of this month. $1.6 trillion worth of debt in this country uh, is student loan debt. And it is the primary reason that most kids, uh, or kids, uh, rather millennials, whatever, still talk to their parents, um, you know, because they may actually have to move back in with them. Uh, and trust me, old people, uh, your kids don't want to move back in with you after college because, believe it or not, we don't like the sound of hearing your hips break uh, while you have incredibly uncomfortable sex in the uh, next room. Um, really, the millennial in your life is moving back in because at age 18, they were tricked into believing that a liberal arts degree is actually worth $120,000 compounded uh, at 4.5% interest daily over the course of 30 years. Um, I'd say that their parents probably should have taught them better. Um, but in reality, our country has been failing at math for like half a century now. So these children were like literally growing up without role models here. All right. I mean, don't believe me. Seriously, just look at the national debt. Any generation that turned on a calculator even once would know that $17 trillion is such a huge fucking amount of money that you can't ever hope to pay it back. All right? So what does this mean? It means that the uh, country at all ages is uh, swimming in debt the way that fucking Scrooge McDuck does the backstroke through a 10-story vault full pocket change. All right? If you've got college debt, I got news for you, brother. You're on your own, all right? Don't expect a dime from your Uncle Sam to help. I don't care what any of the political candidates are telling you. You ain't receiving a check for nothing. Uncle Sam's tapped out, man. He's tapped out. He owes money to people. He owes money to everybody. He owes money to people. And all, most of those people have guns and tanks and bombers. You know, shit that's scary. And what, what do you have? Probably a least Honda Civic, right? <laughs> I didn't threaten when compared to shit that explodes. Not for, not at all. But fortunately for you folks, if you got student debt or any sort of debt, this will work for you. Because for the past few months, I've uh, tried to solve some of our country's biggest problems. All right. You know, and I know that they don't affect most of your daily lives. Unless, of course, you're a, a gun-toting immigrant that's looking for an abortion. Um, but today, uh, I'm going to I'm going to help you uh, get rid of your student debt in the truly the only true American way, and uh, I'm going to teach you how to get the only meaningful job in this country. Um, that's right. I'm going to tell you how to get rich and famous. And before you jump in and you start acting concerned, say, hey, but Mike, I don't have any talent or special abilities, and that might make it hard for me to get rich. Don't worry about it. You know, most rich and famous people don't have any real talent whatsoever. And with this foolproof method that I'm about to give to you for free, you can have both wealth and fame in a matter of days without ever having contributed anything worthwhile to art, science, culture, or even done a good deed, all right? And some of you might also be thinking, but Mike, I have like 1,200 friends on Facebook. I'm popular and famous in my own way. And I'm sorry to burst your bubble. That's not real fame or even popularity, all right? Real fame and popularity are judged by one factor and one factor alone, folks. And that's how many people would cheat on their significant other just to suck some random portion of your anatomy. Now, I want you to notice how I didn't say dick there. All right? Because I will admit, as a man, while random people sucking your dick is awesome and a great way to spend a Tuesday... 
Not everyone's into that, all right? And if you're famous, you can afford to be extra weird. Whatever fetish you choose, you know, people's willingness to do it with you is how your popularity is really rated, all right? That's the one and only standard. So take notes, folks, because your life is about to get better. Step one in my foolproof plan, and have your pen and paper ready, folks. Number one, real simple. Fuck a famous musician. And I know this sounds harder than it actually is. Um, you know, no pun intended there. Um, because you see, musicians, they like to have a lot of sex. Lots and lots of sex. I mean, maybe it's the artsy gene that comes out in them. Maybe it's the tight pants that squish their genitals and force all those sex hormones right back into their brains. I don't know. I'm not a doctor. However, I do know that musicians, both male and female, will pretty much fuck anything that moves. I'm almost positive I once saw a uh, thing on the Discovery Channel or VH1 or someone intelligent must have done research in the matter for it to become this widespread. But the good news you, especially if you're ugly, is that they won't fuck anything. Just hang out anywhere where a musician might be. You know, bars, and they love to booze almost as much as they love to have sex. Drug houses. You know, you know some, some love drugs more than they love sex, and uh, that could be a problem. You want to stay away from those? I'll get back to those later. Um, and concerts. This tends to be where musicians hang out a lot because, well, it's their job. And if you don't like going to any of those places, you can also hang out at Hot Topic uh, because where else would a pop star get a t-shirt from a concert they weren't alive to have seen in the first place? So they got to be frequenting one of those joints, all right? And really, you don't have to worry about what type of music the musician makes either. It really doesn't matter. They they all like the items I just listed uh, there, and any famous musician will really work out for this plan. Just make sure that the musician is really famous, though. That is the one key thing here. They actually have to be famous. Uh, you know, they have to be from bands or, you know, a singer that people actually know. You know, you, you can't go giving a BJ to your favorite indie rock band's lead singer. All right. You know, especially if only like six hipsters are the only people in the in crowd enough to know who they actually are. You know, and consequently, uh, banging a famous opera singer, male or female, it really doesn't matter at this point, probably won't get you too far either. Nobody knows who they are. All right. Um, it, I mean, don't get me wrong. Either of these activities might be fun because let's face it. Sex is always fun, except for the times it makes you cry, but it won't make you famous. So in this portion, remember, keep your eye on the prize and remember what you're in this for, fame and fortune. So find yourself a musician that people could, would recognize on the street. And as I mentioned earlier, um, when you are searching for your musician uh, to have sexual relations with, um, Make sure you do avoid the ones who like to do drugs more than actually having sex. Uh, if the guy or the girl uh, won't put down the pipe, needles, bong, spoon uh, to unzip their pants, you really shouldn't waste their time. your time, all right? You're going to need your musician ready to perform when the camera starts rolling. One that's too interested in getting high will ultimately just pass out and start having a conversation with a house plan or something, depending on what her, his or her drug of choice is. And I didn't, I, I didn't mention cameras, and I should have, right? Well, get that's it. Uh, that's going to lead me right into the next step. I probably should have brought this up first, but it seems like you can start your hunt with a musician. The camera is a little bit easier. Um, camera, cell phone, whatever you got, because... Step two comes next. So you've got your camera, you've got your musician ready to fuck. Uh, step two is a combination of the things. Go ahead and make yourself a sex tape. Um, 
the important thing to remember right here is be prepared. Make sure that the, the phone or camera or whatever you got going on uh, has a full charge when you go to fuck your musician, all right? Uh, you may have to plan ahead, a little, use a little willpower and not play like Candy Crush or update your Facebook status to something like going to fuck a famous person uh, while waiting in line to actually fuck that famous person. Uh, but you want to make sure you have that camera ready from beginning to end. No good sex tape ends before one or both parties finish. Besides, you don't want to be known later as a quitter, do you? All right. So, um, and yes, while we're on the topic, uh, you will probably have to wait in line to fuck your famous person. Just saying. Uh, handlers and bodyguards pretty much line normal people up and let them have a ride like it's Space Mountain at Disney World a lot of times. Uh, don't be disappointed uh, if you aren't the only one going to do the deed that night. Just remember, you're special. You're the only one going there to do the deed with purpose. All right. So have that cell phone charged and ready when they open the gates, because when the action starts, it all needs to be caught on film. And uh, all right, admittedly here, you may worry a little bit about uh, how the musician may feel about having sex on tape. Well, don't. <laughs> Most musicians or artists in general uh, think they're even better at fucking than they are at actually making music. Uh, so they'll be more than happy to put their real art on display for the whole world. Uh, and once you whip the camera out and tell them to start filming, you'll probably see their eyes light up. All right. Uh, sex tapes for celebrities are like national holidays for the rest of us. They happen a few times a year, and it usually gets you off, right? Okay. Step three uh, <laughs> is have your plan, but be prepared for anything. All right, I know this sounds a little convoluted. Just follow me with it. Uh, this, this part is... Um, Real simple. Uh, it's kind of like the Boy Scout motto of always being prepared. Uh, but first, you should have a plan on how you want to be seen on your sex tape. Um, do you want to be seen as an oral person or really enthusiastic or somewhat crazy? Um, what you reveal on this set, sex tape, though, remember, will directly affect the type of endorsements you'll get in the near future. So make sure you have an idea of the type of you that you would ideally like portrayed in the video. Uh, this means, uh, guy or girl, that you should probably do your makeup or shower, at least try to look like a decently groomed human being. A little attention given to personal hygiene and knowing which angle you know, makes your sack look bigger can mean millions of dollars down the road. So uh, I totally advise thinking ahead a little. Uh, but that being said, you also need to be prepared to do some weird shit, too. Musicians and other famous people, hell, this will work for any of them. Like I said, they fuck a lot. All right. Uh, so what that means is just throwing out the dick or lying on your back and taking it for 10 to 12 minutes probably won't be enough to keep them interested. All right. You might have to do some things you never have done before, but don't worry. Remember, you aren't alone. Eventually, America will be watching, and no one will think any less of you because, hey, you're going to be famous. Step four in the plan is uh, really for your own safety and protection, and that is uh, cover your ears. All right. The unfortunate part about banging a musician is that they always like to take their work home with them, and then they also like to take their home back to work. Uh, what the fuck does that little esoteric gem mean? <laughs> it means you'll probably have to listen to whatever musician you're fucking hum, sing, play air guitar, or pretend like they're stroking a trombone at some point during your sexual escapade. All right. They may, may even try to run through some god awful lyrics and run them by you of their latest little ditty they're working on, which is most likely a freestyle about how fine your ass is. All right. <laughs> That's what it means to have a musician bring their work home. 
On the flip side, though, you have to be prepared to be immortalized via a shitty pop, rap, rock, country, whatever type of song that references your sexual ability in some sort of coy way. Okay, so it may not always be coy. Your body may be a wonderland, or you may just be another bitch or hoe. But let's be honest here. If you let the insane clown posse tag team you, you'll probably end up in a song that tells explicitly what happened. That's okay, though. Don't be embarrassed. Think of it as a play-by-play -play commentary for the sex tape you're about to release. And that's what I mean when I say that a musician will probably end up taking their home to work. All right. So, yeah, cover your ears. Step five, leak the tape. After uh, after the heavy cleaning of your private parts and a small recovery time, your dignity, depending on what you had to do, go ahead and just send a nice little video and, uh, copy of that tape to TMZ. My personal recommendation is to copy the video from DVD to VHS and back to DVD before sending it to the sleazy tabloid of your choice. All right. This will give the video that grainy quality that seems inherent in every celebrity sex tape. The poor enough quality, the advantages, you can always claim that there really wasn't a goat in the room during sex, or that your cock is really much bigger in real life, all right? It just allows for some wiggle room on the details down the road. Uh, you want the video to be convincing and somewhat clear, but not so sharp that people can make out the freckles on your ass, okay? And I know some of you are probably thinking, DVD, what is this, like 2004? And yes, I would suggest uh, that you make a hard copy of this video and you mail it out because uh, hard, copiers, hard copies are harder to track, all right? Do not email this to anybody. You certainly don't want to send that video from your own email account. You'll end up being considered just another star fucker looking for fame. And this is not what you want, all right? This game is about class, and you have to be classy if you want your star to shine through the shitstorm that's eventually going to hit. And that shitstorm hits now. That's step six. Step six is deny, deny, deny. Because you see, classy people don't make sex tips. Classy people don't fuck musicians while a goat stares awkwardly at their ass or an Asian girl makes a cucumber salad in their tank. And A, for the record, I don't judge people by their fetishes. We're all a little strange when it comes to sex. But you don't want to be classy. You want to be famous. And famous people do lots of weird shit. However, the one thing every rich and famous person does is deny that they do that same weird shit. So once your sex tape has been leaked and someone approaches you asking about the tape, you deny that it's you in the video. And seriously, don't worry about how people will find out that it's you in the sex tape. Believe me, they will, because everyone ends up seeing part of those celebrity sex tapes at least once, even if they only watch it out of morbid curiosity, because deep down we all want to know uh, if rich people fuck the same way we do, right? <laughs> so I'm sure someone somewhere will recognize you from the way you lick ass to that tattoo of a smiley face just above your dick. All right. They'll figure out that it's you and will tell someone who cares. All right. And from there, it's just a few mouse clicks until your Facebook page is connected with the event. Again, though, to anyone and everyone who approaches you about this, you have to deny that it is really you. Now, don't get me wrong. Do not refrain from giving interviews on that. Give as many interviews as you can. Get in front of as many media sources as you can about this. Um, and talk and deny, and deny about what people are clearly seeing. Uh, this will get your name out in the public eye and keep you relevant for a lot longer than the standard 15 minutes of fame that most people get. So what happens next? All right, step seven, and that's take any invitation that comes your way. After you get done with the obligatory interviews, 
uh, people will start to recognize you when you go out as either the goat guy or the cucumber taint salad girl uh, from that video. You know, from there, it won't be long, be long before some second-rate burger chain wants to offer you a contract for a commercial or some network starving for ratings wants to follow you around with a camera to see if you do any more stupid shit. Go ahead and take them up on their offer, all right? Beggars can't be choosers. Besides, today's media isn't about quality. It's about saturation. And if someone wants to pay you $1 million to shove a cheeseburger in your face, you do it. It sure beats the hell out of real work. And really, you've already shoved worse things in your mouth, and they've gotten that on tape. And after, like, your 20th commercial slash TV show, because there will be that many, people will eventually start to forget what made you famous in the first place. You'll be a household name now. Your wealth and your fame will become a symbol of the quintessential American story. Eventually, you may even become a cultural figure that people become so personally invested in that it'll seem like sacrilege to even say you got famous because of a sex tape in the first place. People may even start to assume you have talent. They'll even start maybe calling you pretty, even if you're not. They'll come to you with business deals and pay you even more money to be partially clothed in their magazines, even though everyone has already seen your bouncing ass all over the internet. And they'll bring money. Oh, boy, will they bring money. Because money and fame just breed more money and fame. That's what it's like to be rich in this country. You'll be a model of the American dream and what every overbearing parent wants his or her child to be. So go ahead and wax your asshole and prepare to be an icon, all right? And don't forget to send me a commission check before you pay off those student loans because now you're rich. Thanks a lot, guys. This is uh, Mike Solves America. Please make sure to check out MikeSolvesAmerica.com where you will find written versions of these same things along with fake news. Occasionally, if somebody wants to send me an email, you can contact me through there. Tell me how right and or wrong I am. You can also contact me through Zombie Takeover TV who have been continually so kind to help me put these things together. Uh, and get them out there to you and giving me a platform and a voice uh, when no one else will because they have better sense than that. Uh, thank you all, and we will talk again on the Internet soon. Thanks, guys.